Hi, this is Heather from K2Z. And in this series of videos, I'm going to take you through white supremacy culture patterns as suggested by Tima Okun. There are 18 of them. So originally, Tima had only come up with about 15 back in late 1990s. And just this past May 2021, she introduced three more. And we're going to start with one of those, which is prevalent throughout all of the patterns and seems so obvious now. And that's the pattern of fear. There's a couple of ways that we can look at this. One is the fear that we feel in our everyday lives around are we gonna make enough money? Do we have job security? Are our kids gonna be okay? What's happening with COVID? If you're in the UK, there are fuel shortages, prices are rising. People are wondering whether there's going to be enough food on the shelves by the time Christmas comes. This is October, 2021, by the way. All kinds of uncertainty that we have had even before COVID and recent times. This sense of fear of not belonging, a fear of being criticized, things of getting things wrong, a fear of not being able to live up to expectations that society has of you as a woman, as a man, as uh, someone in your job role, this constant underlying fear. The other side of fear would be how fear can be used to manipulate us by politicians, by the media, to keep us going along with their particular narrative. It could be fear of immigrants. It could be fear of crime and our neighbors. It keeps us in a state of like a trauma response, which makes it really difficult for us to think clearly and think through very complex issues. And that pattern's going to come up again shortly. So just pause and you might wanna actually pause the video and have a think about how fear turns up for you in your own life, in your own history, in your heritage, in society, in your workplace, in your country, in the world. Fear about the future, fear of climate change. And notice that in this moment, you're actually okay. And you can relax your body a bit. If you are watching this series of videos as part of the Facebook group, feel free to jot down your reflections, questions inside the guide for this workshop. And details about joining that Facebook group will be given at the end of each video. Okay, so let's take a look at the next set of patterns. So we have the idea that there's only one right way to do something. And this can show up in your job where the boss knows exactly which way we're going to do things. It shows up in society saying capitalism is the only way. We've tried everything else and nothing else works. So now we're left with no other alternative. One right way to do things could show up with parents, etc. Being attached to run one right way of doing things can also show up in the pattern of perfectionism. And this is when we have a lot of trouble appreciating things. And instead, we have a pattern towards criticizing things 
So we look for places where people have made mistakes. We look for places in ourselves where we've made mistakes, where we're not able to appreciate the good things that we've done. And we internalize this pattern of perfectionism and beat ourselves up over when we've done something wrong. But this also happens in a workplace where people are afraid of making mistakes, afraid of failure, which means that we don't experiment, try new things, appreciate each other for trying. We want to have um, an antidote to this. And she does go through antidotes in her document where she writes all this and now it's a website. An antidote would be to create that new kind of feedback culture where we do appreciate one another and we are open to hearing about ways that we can do things differently. So perfectionism is something that like we, many of us recognize um, in ourselves and in our culture. And I am, you know, we're talking about white supremacy culture patterns here. We're not talking about whites. It's white supremacy culture patterns. We might argue over what, whether that's an appropriate label, but the idea is that this is a dominant culture that is across the planet, shows up in many other cultures. And it is, these are patterns that make it difficult for us to think creatively and flexibly about the problems that we face and how we should be responding appropriately to them. So you can stop for a second with one right way and perfectionism. Think about how that shows up in your own life, in your workplace, schools, society. The one right way pattern also is very closely aligned with paternalism. So the idea that I know better than you. So the boss can be like that. A country can be like that. When a country goes into a so-called developing country and goes in to save it, like a missionary approach or giving charity, it's saying, we're much more advanced than you are. And so we're going to go to your country and we're going to help you become more like us because we know what you should do and how you should do it. And the why you should do it is really, we've already figured that out. And so you don't need to question that. So that paternalism means that you're not getting a diversity of approaches to any kind of issue, problem, challenge. And it's a pattern that pushes down the exact kind of thinking that we need in the world today. Paternalism can show up in parents as well. Have a pause. Think about it. Reflect on it in the Facebook group or just for yourself. Or you can go to the website and book a workshop to do this with other people live. Objectivity is another pattern. And that is the idea that there is such a thing as objectivity that we don't have a bias in some places. Often we say science, we have no, um, there's no bias there, but obviously just deciding what to study in science implies a bias. When we see that medical research is conducted on white Western men more than other people, that's a bias towards them. And it means that the research conducted isn't necessarily going to be applicable to women, to people of color, to indigenous people, to black people, people of the global majority. 
Objectivity also implies a kind of lack of emotion. And that if you show emotions, then there's something wrong with you and that you can't be trusted. And so this can show up in where women are seen to be too emotional, therefore can't make good leaders. We might ask ourselves, do we want people with emotional intelligence who are leading us and providing flexible and creative solutions or approaches to problems? Or do we want people who think that they can separate emotions from thinking that that's even possible? So this can turn up in workplaces um, when there are differences in how people respond to things. It turns up in journalism, the way that things are worded. Seven people were killed. It's quite a passive way of saying something versus the military, or the police killed five people. So it, the passive voice um, protects certain people. And so when journalists use it, it is not objective. There's bias there. Deciding what news is going to be the top news is biased. It's impossible to get away from it. There's so many news stories out there that somebody does have to choose which ones to prioritize. Pause on the pattern of objectivity and the idea of emotions not having a place in society and how we make our decisions. Unless it's to, for example, encourage women to do unpaid care work. And then there is a, a plea to the emotions that you should be doing this out of the goodness of your heart and shouldn't expect to get paid for it. Okay. The last one in this grouping is being qualified. And this is a new one that Tima Okun introduced. The idea that we have to prove ourselves through external validation and verification. It's quite popular to talk about the imposter syndrome. And that would be the idea that I'm faking it. I'm not actually qualified to do this job. With doctors, there's medical degrees and you've been through all this training and you can imagine someone who's had no training at all, there are no qualifications, performing surgery on somebody, and we might be very alarmed by that. That's an extreme example. But on the other hand, there are people with plenty of wisdom and experience to offer the world, and yet they internalize the idea that they need some kind of external validation qualification in order to be able to provide this service thinking to the world or on the other hand, they might feel completely confident, but society won't let them without these credentials. This means that certain jobs are limited to people who have been able to work the system, had access to the system, the resources required to access the system in order to get that job. So you're already excluding people who might have plenty of experience and skill, but didn't do it through the, the normal system. And so therefore they're not going to show up for these jobs. They're not going to apply or be successful in their applications. And so this limits the diversity within an organization, a business society. Pause on that one. We probably all have a lot of feelings about feeling inadequate, about not being qualified. I'm going to stop this video here and I'll
reminder that there's a link to learning more about workshops and to the Facebook group. And in the next video, we will continue with these patterns.